and I'm just going to carry on with the breathing. So again, that was 12, but we're going to go for 12A. The phone went then. So again, it just messed up the whole thing. So you can go to Ujjayi breath. If you want to go a little bit deeper on Ujjayi breath, we're still on separating the clouds here. Okay, separating the clouds, um, base seat number 12 and hole 35. Again, we're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals. Take your navel towards the spine. And we're breathing out through the nose still. But again, if you want to take this onto Ujjayi breath, slightly more advanced breath, then you simply grip at that esophagus, narrow the esophagus. Okay. And that will lengthen the whole will cycle the breath also, as well as breathing out through the nose. But we're going to narrow the esophagus and we're going to make this sound. Again, we're going to breathe in through the nose. It's a... Keep the shoulders down and it's a with a mouth shut. Again, we're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out the abdominals in that Pilates way, but breathing out through the nose, elongating the out breath still, but <clears throat> we're just adding this Ujjayi breath. This Ujjayi breath's here. We narrow the esophagus and we go. Keep them shoulders down and it's a with a mouth shut. <laughs> Nearly sort of Darth Vader breath, something like that. That soft, silky, whistling, raspy sound from the back of the throat. Ujjayi breath. Victorious breath in Sanskrit. So, as you do that, this sound, it's a... Keep your shoulders down, and it's a... As you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, you're still getting that Ujjayi breath, victorious breath from the back of the throat, sort of seashore breathing. That would help stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Helps us build the heat from the body, helps us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath. Lovely. If you can't get that, don't worry. Carry on zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, taking the navels towards the spine, and simply breathing out through the nose while elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. Okay, but otherwise, go with the Ujjayi breath. If you do the Ujjayi breath, it's gonna help fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body, help us build the heat from the body, help us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Okay. And again, we help stimulate that thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Again, Ujjayi breath sort of like a natural breathing we might do in everyday life when we're trying to focus on something like a fine motor skill, etc. Threading a needle, something like that. You'll naturally do a sighing breath. We're just simply overemphasizing this Ujjayi breath right now. That's going to give your mind something even more to focus on. Okay. No matter what breath you're doing though, if you can get the Ujjayi breath, great. If you can't, don't worry. Just be aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, as it weaves that tapestry of relaxation in every single organ, cell, sinew of the body at will. Okay? Lovely. That'll help us lengthen that breath even longer. And give the mind something to focus on. Real focusing breath, that is. Okay, which we're overemphasizing. Lovely, sort of seashore breathing. Brilliant, so it's a nice, simple motion, uh, separate the clouds. It's simply opening up the chest and pushing away the walls, Samson style. So you feel that stretch, your little pinkies, little fingers. As you open out the chest, you get a stretch on the chest. It's always nice to open out the chest. We tend to compress the chest a lot through hitching the shoulders, etc. So it's always nice to open out this chest and open out like a book. And all them organs in the chest, the heart, the lungs, the pericardium, the heart lining, all being opened out like a book. Lovely. And as you're still zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out abdominals, taking the navel towards the spine. And you're simply opening out that chest. It's a real sort of nice one to put the shoulders in the right position. If, as you're doing this, you're going to breathe in, 
and you're going to exhale. Long on the out breath. So you're breathing in sharper on the in breath, the ascending part, and you're descending down longer, taking the hands back towards you so you get that stretch in these forearm flexors, the chest, but again, the shoulders just melt down in towards the body. As you're doing this, breathing in sharper up right now, still zipping up, scooping out abdominals, and exhaling long down, okay? And as you're doing that, imagine the shoulders just sliding down into the rib cage, just like magnets sliding down the fridge into the right position. Really good for shoulder girdle stabilization. As you're breathing in coming up and descending down long right now, just imagine the shoulder blades mounting down over the top of the hips. So if there's a trickle of water, just running down the back and dispersing, mount the shoulders over your hips, head over shoulders. That lovely soft feel between the shoulder blades. And again, as with all these, you can add a squat in if you like but I stick with the Iyengar Yoga principles of only going as low as you can keep your knees in line with toes, okay? Again, hip width or slightly wider than hip width, but again, stay up high and just do the arm bit. If you wanna go down low, got no problems with the knees, that's great, but don't let the knees go past the toes, knees in line with toes, then tailbone deep. Only as low as you can keep the knees in line with toes. It can be a centimetre or a millimetre or a foot, it doesn't matter. It's only as low as you keep your knees in line with toes. Optional, we'll go back and demonstrate. Feet hip width apart. Gonna go wider, go wider. As you're doing that, only come down as low as keep the knees in line with toes. So when you do it, um, just as you're collapsing inwards, dying off, think tiny waist, navel towards the spine. So if you've got a little rib cord on your belly button, pulling in towards the spine, that magnet on the spine, pulling the belly button in. Lovely. So that was gonna call that 12A, because I did it, I had to do it in two parts. So there's a phone call right in the middle, I'm just upset. <laughs> Lovely, but the next one is, it goes into the far out names, away from the simple names, uh, the fifth of the 18 form Qigong sequence part added onto the eight brocades at the beginning and the nine form at the end. So again, this is 12 and the whole 35. This one's called the Back Swinging Monkey. Um, again, first of the far out names, but that one was separating the clouds. Bang.